PlayStation 5 versus Xbox Series X. The massive showdown of the new next generational consoles coming later this year is well underway. And today we're going to be taking a look at everything that we know with new updated information about both consoles having come out literally today. If you're wanting to get either of the new consoles, hit the thumbs up button within the next five seconds and let me know down below which one of the consoles you currently lean towards and sit back, relax as we go through everything you need to know. With Sony having done a massive live stream just today giving us tons of technical details about the brand new PlayStation 5 and people literally getting hands on with the new Xbox Series X just a few days ago. We've got so much new stuff to talk about and all of this detail is very, very juicy. But which one is looking like it's going to be coming out on top? We're going to be taking a look at price, the controllers, the power, the game's backwards compatibility, release dates and all in this video. So make sure you stick around to the end and if you haven't already, subscribe for all the latest news and info. Starting off with power, which of these two beasts is going to be more powerful. Well, today with PlayStation's new live stream, which was cancelled initially, it was meant to be at an event called GDC. They came to us with a video on YouTube, which ultimately ran through a load of technical specifications and actually was pretty boring. But having gotten all of the specs actually written down on a sheet of paper, things are looking a lot tighter than we initially thought. With both consoles going for an AMD Zen 2 processor, the actual processing power being a little bit more powerful on the Xbox Series X, the GPU being the same AMD RDNA a2 with the teraflops going a little bit more in favor of the Xbox, but actually the compute units going a little bit more in PlayStation 5's favor. With almost identical RAM and storage in the form obviously of SSD for super fast load times, and both offering 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray, as you can see without getting too nerdy, basically things are looking very, very similar. From what people are saying, the Xbox Series X is a little bit more powerful, but either way, it's safe to say both these consoles will be so much bigger, better, and faster than the previous gen. Now, I want to pose a question to you guys watching, do you use mainly digital games or discs? Because the Xbox actually released, towards the end of the current gen cycle, the digital version of the Xbox One X. Essentially, you can't put a disc in, you can only store games on it. Thinking about it, I genuinely can't remember the last time I actually bought a physical game disc, maybe for my Switch. But what I'm trying to get at here is that digital games are basically what people are moving towards, but they are very, very big in size. For example, the new Modern Warfare, if you download that with the Battle Royale. There's something ridiculous, well over 100 gigabytes. And with the fact that there's such an expensive fast SSD in the console, and both of them only being around one terabyte, sounds a lot, but that means you can only fit on 10 games if they're the same size as Modern Warfare. Now, Xbox have already announced it'll have an official Xbox upgrade cartridge almost, which essentially allows you to plug in additional SSD storage for that super fast gaming experience and boot time, meaning that you can increase the size of the storage on the console, which is only good news. PlayStation have also said they'll be given the option to actually increase the SSD storage within the console for more games, but they haven't said exactly how it will be done and maybe a little bit more complicated. We'll have to find out. Either way, hopefully not too expensive because SSDs can be a little bit expensive. Now to actually put this power and all of the specs and features that these companies are talking about into action, thanks to the amazing tech YouTuber Austin Evans that actually got hands on with the Xbox Series X recently, you can actually see an official example of a test build of actual ray tracing being used in real time whilst playing Minecraft on the new console. It gives you a great idea as to how great ray tracing looks in games and how more realistic it is. And another amazing feature showed off on the Xbox Series X was actually how quickly you could jump between between games and pick up exactly where you left off. You jump from a racing game to another game and it would literally take no time at all to boot up that new game in the exact same save state that you're at where you left it, which is just mind blowing and shows you how quickly things should be loading and how minimal all of the loading screens will be. Thank goodness. Now, when it comes to the PlayStation 5, we haven't got anything physical to actually look at. We know that it will also be capable of ray tracing as well, something they've talked about a lot already. Something PlayStation did address whilst talking about the new PlayStation 5 is the fact that the older console, the PS4, sound Sounds like a spaceship is about to take off when it's running those really high-end performance games and I've definitely experienced that. With the PlayStation 5, however, they say they're basically going to be able to change the power output at any point to essentially accommodate what kind of power levels are needed for the game you're actually playing to minimize overheating, noise and basically spaceship sounds that come from the PlayStation 4, which is only a good thing. But when it comes to actually seeing the console, booting up games and how quickly it can do everything, we're still waiting, unfortunately. Now, what about the controllers? It's worth noting that despite 
despite the fact we got this massive live stream from Sony today, we did not get a look at the actual PlayStation, which sucks. I'm sure it'll be coming soon, however. But the Xbox Series X has obviously been revealed. We know what it looks like, and the controller itself is almost identical to the previous gen Xbox controller. And the controller can actually work on the previous gen Xbox One as well. And previous controls can actually be taken forward as well to work on the new Series X, which is awesome. From what I can see, the controller just has slightly grippier controls to it. The buttons are almost identical with the brand new share button in the middle and apart from that basically the controller is looking exactly the same so if you like the old xbox controller you'll like the new one as well when it comes to the playstation 5 we've got a load of details about what it'll actually do including the fact that it'll have the ability to give lots of haptic feedback the l2 and r2 buttons will be fully adjustable to give more or less pressure depending on what game you're playing the controller's haptic feedback ability will give you even more immersion when you're playing different games like driving over rocky roads for example and from what we know it will look very similar to the previous gen controller but not exactly the same. You may be seeing this picture of the PlayStation 5 going around if you haven't seen my previous videos. Essentially, this is a dev kit version for people that are developing games and working on the console. Not the final commercial look of the actual console, so we still gotta wait for that. But what about the price? It's rumored that the Xbox Series X could be a little bit cheaper than the PlayStation 5. Obviously, with all the components that go into these consoles, it costs a lot to make them. When in the previous gen consoles launched, the PlayStation 5 is a little bit cheaper than the Xbox and it really helped them out. So whoever undercuts the other here is definitely going to have an advantage. The price point is looking to be around about $500 for both of the consoles, and we should be getting official prices very soon. Now, what about backwards compatibility? PlayStation 5 came out and said that almost all of their top 100 PlayStation 4 games will be ready to go and ready to play on the PlayStation 5, with that catalog building up over time. So if there's any of your PlayStation games that you love to play, that will be working on PlayStation 5 eventually. However, Xbox probably one-upping them in the sense that they will have their full Xbox catalog. So that's Xbox 3 360, Xbox One, and then also Xbox Series X. All of those games will ultimately be available to play on the new console with a massive back catalog of games. Sony have always struggled with the backwards compatibility department, so I really hope that yes, the PlayStation 4 games will work, and hopefully the pickup to get all of the rest of the PlayStation 4 games to work on the PlayStation 5 will be nice and quick and it'll all run smoothly. Backwards compatibility is great, but what about actual games? Now, when it comes to launch titles, there has been very minimal talk about specific games for either of these consoles. Consoles. When it comes to launch titles, this is a big, big selling point for either of the consoles. Nintendo always have their Marios, their Zeldas, which I am a massive fanboy of and helps shift those consoles massively. But when it comes to these two games, they're going to need some big releases and some exclusive home run hitting games that's going to shift their consoles off of the shelves. Now, the list of exclusive games isn't that big at the moment, but for the Xbox Series X, they've announced Halo Infinite, Microsoft Flight Simulator, a skateboarding game called Session, and a few games like Ori and the Will of Wisps, Bleeding Edge, Grounded, and Tell Me Why, but some of these games will be coming out on the current gen Xbox anyway, and then basically be re-released, look a little bit better, and be playable on the new Xbox. So it won't be tied just to the new Xbox. For the PlayStation 5, the first party exclusive game confirmed so far is Godfall. And apart from that, there isn't much else confirmed. Ratchet and Clank is rumored to potentially be a launch exclusive game for the PlayStation 5, which would be pretty awesome. But aside from that, we've got a few games like Outriders, Gods and Monsters, even Rainbow Six Siege, all getting launches on both Xbox and PlayStation 5. I think it's safe to say that if you're a big Call of Duty fan, both of those will be coming out on these new next gen consoles, which is always good news. And again, there's more games which will be coming out on both platforms as well. And talking about all of this stuff is great, but when can we actually get hands on with it? Both companies have come out and said that these consoles will be releasing this holiday period, so basically like the end of 2020. Now literally as I'm recording this video, there was like a slight leak or an accidental release over I believe on the Indian Xbox website where it actually said that the Xbox Series X will be coming out on Thanksgiving 2020, which I believe to be the 26th of November. They've come out and said that that wasn't meant to go live and that isn't an exact date as of yet, so we're still within the holiday window of this year. Obviously whichever console comes out first here could get the jump on the other one. It's going to be really interesting or maybe people will hold back until both are out before they make their decision. Either way, as I look to my left, I literally have a Switch, a PlayStation 4 Pro, Xbox 360, Xbox One X and more ready to go. I play everything and obviously I game on PC as well. So I will be getting both of these on launch, sharing my thoughts and opinions with you guys and as more details come out and maybe even a chance to get early hands on with these consoles, I'll feed back to you guys straight away. So 
having now had a look at everything so far, have you changed your opinion or are you still sticking with your original choice? Personally, I've always played a lot on both, but I'd more prefer the PlayStation controller. So I'm interested to see how the new PS5 controller compares, but I'll also be interested to see what all of you guys are thinking down below as well. Either way, it is a very exciting time and it feels like ages ago when the last gen consoles come out, so I can't wait for these two new ones. If you want to go a little bit more in depth on both of these consoles, it'll be a dedicated PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X on screen right now, so go and check them out for even more specific details. Hopefully you really enjoyed the video. Hopefully it's given you all the information you needed. We're getting closer and closer, guys. So thank you for watching and go and check out more of these videos right now for more details.